Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Let me ask you a question. What are you filling your life with? Uh, see, for a long time, my answer would be, have been burgers, pizza, Diet Pepsi, and ice cream. Okay, I mean, those are things I love and things that I uh, love having in my life. But then uh, you wake up one day and your pants don't fit, uh, you need oxygen after tying your shoes, and your blood work comes back sketchy and the doctor starts getting on your case. And, and so uh, what are you filling your life with? Listen to the admonition from the Apostle Paul, Ephesians 5.18. He simply says, do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. Do not get drunk with wine, because that doesn't lead to anything good, but be filled with the Spirit. So the Apostle Paul has two choices, and he contrasts, uh, you, know, uh, you know, what are you giving control of your life to? You know, is it, is it to alcohol and drunkenness, or is it to the Holy Spirit? He says, what is dominating your life? Now, before we go any further, I just got to address my Baptist friends who are kind of freaking out. They were talking about alcohol, and they're like, see, see, you can't drink. Uh, like, I grew up in, in churches where you had to pledge not to drink alcohol, no, no consumption whatsoever if you wanted to be in leadership. Uh, all that did is create a lot of hypocrites who uh, broke that rule. But I just want you to know, Scripture does not prohibit consumption of alcohol. It does condemn drunkenness. Okay? So that's really clear. It's, it's a command, don't get drunk with wine, be filled with the Spirit. So, let's go back to the question. What is it that controls your life? What is it that fills your life? The Apostle Paul encourages us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're a follower of Jesus, then you receive the Holy Spirit upon your confession of faith in Jesus as Lord. God the Holy Spirit moved into your life. He is your teacher, he is your comforter, he is your convictor of sin, and he is the one who guarantees your salvation. So he's doing all those things in your life, and to be filled with the Holy Spirit is to surrender control of your life to God. Now, that begins with a prayer of surrender. God, I want you to have control, but it's not just what you say with your mouth, but it's about stepping into obedience. It's about sacrifice and service to Jesus and saying, you're the one who has control of my life. And when you do that, then God does amazing things in your life. It's incredible. Now, he's contrasting that with the behavior of drunks. So I, I find this amusing because to be drunk on wine or to be high on drugs or to be altered by some other uh, you know, intoxicant is just the opposite of the Holy Spirit. Because think about drunks. Drunks tend to be obnoxious. Uh, they tend to be out of control. They don't have control of their faculties or their facilities or their mouths. And definitely drunk people lack judgment, right? Hence the famous last words, here, hold my beer and watch this. You guys know what I'm talking about. But Paul says, instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And he goes on to say, against such things as these, there is no law. There is no reason for you to have other rules because you're living by the Spirit. So the question comes down to this. Which one do you want? Do you want to surrender your life to the whims and poor judgment of addiction, of abuse, of some other outside force controlling you? Or do you want to surrender your life to Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. I know which one I'm praying for you, so I hope this helps, and I pray that God blesses you today. Have a great day, Calvary.